Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll talk about how to go about comparing two fractions. And at the end of the video, if you feel that you want more practice, if you want to practice some more questions, you will find that we have done every single math problem that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition. And you will find the solution to these problems, problems that appeared in this, in this book from day number 1 through 80. These, fifth edition, day 1 through 80. And in particular, the problems dealing with this concept of comparing fractions you will find on day number 18. Just watch, just type in T's day 18 and you will find it. In addition to the T's series, there is also another series which says basic math. Just type in basic math day 64 and 65. There also you will find some more problems dealing with how to go about comparing two fractions. Let's get going, shall we? Enough of the talk. The very first, these questions that we are doing right now, they are not in the book. I'm going to give you about six or seven of them. They are not in the book. Here we go. The very first question is asking us to compare two thirds versus three quarters. Two thirds versus three quarters. How do we go about comparing them? Well, this is actually very simple because we know what they are. But as we as we do few more, you will see that it will not be so simple, so obvious to figure out what the values are. Here, of course, we know two thirds is 0.66 repeating, and this is 0.75. Obviously, 0.75 is more than 0.66. But let's just assume that we didn't know it. How do we go about it? But the easiest, the quickest, the most efficient way of comparing two fractions is to make sure that they have the same denominator. If the denominator is the same, then it ceases to play any role. All we have to do at that point is to compare the numerators. For example, for example, if somebody asks you which one is bigger, if somebody is asking you which one is bigger, uh, one-fifth or, or two-tenth, which one is bigger, well, that's the fifth and that's the ten. If we can somehow make that into a tenth, we can compare these two and tell and figure out which one is bigger. For example, how can we convert the five into a ten? Well, multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by two over two. And since we're multiplying it by two over two, we're not changing its value because two over two is just one. Now we can clearly see that one times two is two, one times two is two, and five times two is ten, which is same as this guy. They are equal to each other. Of course, the fifth is equal to the two ten. Of course, we knew that. The same thing we're going to do here. How can we make the denominators the same? Well, why don't we multiply the first fraction by 4 over 4? 4 over 4, because the common denominator, the least common multiplier that is, the least common multiplier of 3 and 4 is 12. So now we have a 12 here, 3 times 4 is 12. We have a 4 here, let's multiply the second fraction by 3 over 3. There we go. Now we are in, now we are in a position to compare and tell which fraction is bigger. Here we get 8 twelfths. And here we get 9 twelfths. And of course, 9 twelfths is bigger than 8 twelfths. Let's do one more, shall we? How about, about 3 7 versus 4 9? 3 7 versus 4 9. You do it yourself. The least common multiplier is going to be 7 times 9, which is 63. In other words, let's multiply this first fraction by 9 over 9. 9 over 9, and second fraction, let's multiply it by 7 over 7. Again, we're not changing any value because we're multiplying this fraction by 1, we're multiplying this fraction by 1. 9 over 9 is 1, and 7 over 7 is also 1. Now we are done. 3 times 9 is 27, over 6, 7 times 9, and 4 times 7 is 28, over 9 times 7. And of course, we know that 9 times 7 is 63, 9 times 7 is 63, they have the same denominator, but we didn't really have to do that part either. We, don't, we really don't have to worry about what 9 times 7 is, we just have to understand that this is same as that quantity. 9 times 7 is same as 7 times 9. Whatever it happens to be, 9 times 7, it plays no role. It's good to, know, it's good, uh, good to say that we, uh, it's good to point out that it is 63, but actually we didn't have to actually do that. We don't have to figure out what 9 times 7 is, we just have to simply establish that they have the same denominator. As long as the denominator is common, if they have a common denominator, all we have to do is compare the numerator. And 28, of course, is bigger than 27. And therefore, 4 9 is bigger than 3 7. 
and similarly here therefore three quarter is bigger than two third let's do one more you do the next one shall we you do the next one 25 tower 3 versus or other 35 35 over 3 versus 23 over 2 what can we do how can we make how can we make the denominator the same they have a denominator of they have a denominator of 3 and a 2 the least common multiplier of 3 and 2 is 6 let's make the denom let, let's make both of their denominators into 6 let's take our first fraction and multiply it by 2 over 2 now we have a denominator of 6 let's take the second one and multiply it by 3 over 3 now they have a denominator of 6 since they have the same denominator the denominator ceases to play any role the denominator ceases to have any significance it, 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 is, it is there but it really doesn't play any role all we have to do is compare the numerator 2 times 35 is 70 and 3 times 23 is 69 so it's 69 over 6 versus 70 over 6 again even if you did not write this part it plays no role as I said it already there is some number here as long as the same number as that one and of course 70 is bigger than 69 let's do one more shall we let's do one more number 4 6 7th versus 7 8 6 over 7 versus 7 over 8 Again, let's make the same denominator, multiply the first fraction by 8 over 8, so that we have 8 times 7. Here we have an 8, let's multiply the second fraction by 7 over 7. You could sit there and tell me exactly what 8 times 7 is, but as I already pointed out several times, it's not necessary. They just have to have the same denominator. What 8 times 7 actually is, is a moot point. Is a moot point. 8 times 6 is 48, it's 48 over 7 times 8, and 7 times 7 is 49, 49 over 7 times 8, and of course 49 is bigger than, 49 is bigger than 48. The answer is, the answer is 7, 8. The answer here was, see this is bigger, the answer was 35 over, 35 over 3 is bigger than 23 over 2. In case you're wondering what moot point actually means, and if you're interested, only if you are interested in working on your vocabulary, in, in improving your vocabulary, you will find that we learned this, this word, or rather this term, moot point, that is, on page number, on, on day number, just give me one second, okay? On day number seven, just type in vocabulary day seven. And if it doesn't pop up, Simply type in vocabulary day 7. If it doesn't pop up, then try putting in my name first. Type in Keshwani, vocabulary day 7. The video will pop up. Watch that video where we learn what it means to be a moot point. We did this, which, which one did we, we, we did this one just now? Let's do the next one. That was number 4, I believe. Now, of course, by now, of course, we know what's going on. They're very simple. 7 over 11 versus 5, 8. Which, which fraction is bigger? Very simple indeed. Let's multiply this fraction by 8 over 8. And let's multiply that fraction by 11 over 11. That's what it is. They have the same denominator now. 8 times 11, whatever that happens to be. 7 eighths are, well I know 7 7. 7 sevens I do, I do know by heart. 7 sevens are 49. I know 7 times 7 because 7, 7, 7 times 7 is 49, which is a perfect square. And I do know my perfect squares 1 through 10, and so should you. You should know your squares. 1 through 10, all of them by heart if you're going to sit for the exam. Do you understand? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100, just like that. So I know 49 is 7 squared. 7 sevens are 49. We don't have 7 sevens, we have 8 seven. If you were to add one more 7 to 49, 49 plus 1 is 50, and another 6 will be 56. So well, that's 56. And that's very easy, that's 55. Oh, there you go. 56 is bigger than 55. If you wanted to, you could write down the denominator if you wanted to, but it is not necessary. You, you were asked to compare the fraction and you have done so. 56 is bigger than 55. That tells you that 7, 11, 7 over 11 is bigger than 5 over 8. Let's do one more. Four-fifths 
and 5/7. Again, straightforward deal. Multiply this first fraction by 7 over 7. Multiply second fraction by 5 over 5. They both have a denominator of 35. Over here we get 27, 7 fourths of 28. 28 over 35, 25 over 35. And of course 25 is less than 28. One last one. Five nine and four seven. Five nine versus four seven. See what we can do. Multiply the first fraction by seven over seven. Multiply the second fraction by nine over nine. Here we end up with thirty-five. Thirty-five over sixty-three. And here we end up with thirty-six over sixty-three. Or 36 is more than 35. The answer is 4 7th is bigger. The one last thing that I want to do before I close the video, before I, before, before I finish, which is something that I wanted to do in the very beginning, I just thought of it, which is to make you understand, or not make you understand rather, but to give you a mnemonic device. What's a mnemonic? A mnemonic is a memory device. It helps you remember something. It helps you remember something. A lot of the times I hear from students that they have trouble keeping track of which sign does what. Which one is greater than, which one is smaller than. They have trouble with it. I'm going to share with you now, for whatever is worth, a mnemonic device that I was taught when I was, in, when I was a school boy. And the mnemonic device that our teacher taught us is that this thing that you see here I know it's going to sound silly, but that's the beauty of mnemonic device. The more silly they are, the more stupid they are, the easier they are to remember. Do you understand? Make up your own mnemonic device for anything that gives you trouble remembering. Especially if you're preparing for the science portion of the T's. There are a lot of things in, the, in science portion to remember. Just make up mnemonic devices for them. And it will help you remember remember what you need to know. Make your life easier. So, when you, when, when, when you see the sign, our teacher told us, when you see the sign, think of this as a dagger, as, as a dagger, as a knife. As a knife. And who is going to point the dagger to whom? A big guy, a big guy is going to point because the big guy tends to bully. The bully is usually obviously the big guy. The big guy tends to point to the small guy. And the symbol is this. This is the symbol. That is the symbol. And we just established that 5 9 is smaller than. 4 7 5 9 is small. So if you want to write like this, 4 7 which is 36, you're going to say 4 7 is bigger than 5 9. There we go. 4 7 is, 4 7 is bigger than 5 9, which makes perfect sense because if you were to multiply by 9 over 9 here and 7 over 7 here, here you're going to end up with 9 times 4, 9 4 is 36. And 7 5 is a 35, and of course 35 is indeed bigger than 35. 36 is indeed bigger than 35, which is why 36 is being a bully. He's pointing this, this knife uh, uh, to this poor guy, annoying him, bothering him, threatening him, because he's a big guy. It's always a big guy who tends to be the bully, obviously by definition. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? See you.